Have you ever wondered why amateur radio operators are called hams? It's one of those curious names that sound a bit funny at first. After all, what does ham have to do with radios? But behind this odd term lies a rich history stretching back more than a century, filled with innovation, controversy, and a community of passionate experimenters who shaped the world of communication long before the internet existed. In this video, we'll explore where the term ham radio really came from, who coined it, and how it evolved into the name proudly embraced by millions of amateur radio enthusiasts around the world today. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Before we get to the name itself, let's rewind to the early 1900s, the dawn of radio. At that time, radio was still a brand new technology. Most people didn't even own a receiver, and those who experimented with wireless communication were typically inventors, scientists, and enthusiastic hobbyists building their own transmitters from scratch. These pioneers were experimenting with sending signals through the air using Morse code, long before voice transmissions were possible. They were known as amateurs because they weren't commercial operators or professionals. Governments and big corporations, on the other hand, were running powerful stations for military or commercial purposes. Now, back then, the airwaves were an unregulated Wild West. Everyone was experimenting on different frequencies, and there were no clear rules about who could transmit where. The amateurs, young tinkerers, students, and hobbyists, often built small, low-power transmitters in their basements or backyards. But because their signals were sometimes unstable or poorly tuned, they would occasionally interfere with the big commercial or naval stations that relied on clear communication channels. Professional operators, especially those working in shipping and the military, found this incredibly frustrating. They often blamed those hams for messing up their signals. And that's where one of the most popular theories about the name begins. In the early 1900s, ham was actually a slang term used by professional telegraph operators to describe someone who was clumsy or unskilled at sending Morse code. It was basically an insult, like saying someone was a hack or an amateur. When wireless radio became more widespread, the term carried over to describe those same amateurs who weren't part of the professional networks. So when the pros complained about interference, they'd say things like, those hams are jamming our signals again. The amateurs, rather than taking offense, embraced the term and proudly started calling themselves ham radio operators. But that's not the only theory. Some say the term ham actually came from the initials of three early radio pioneers at Harvard University, Hyman, Almy, and Murray. Around 1908, these three students were experimenting with wireless communication and ran one of the earliest amateur stations, which they identified as HAM. When government regulations began requiring operators to register their call signs, they reportedly used HAM as their station's identifier. The story goes that the name gained fame when the students defended amateur radio rights before Congress in 1911, and from then on, HAM became synonymous with amateur radio operators everywhere. However, historians debate how accurate that story really is. There isn't much solid evidence linking the Harvard Trio's station directly to the widespread adoption of the term HAM across the United States. Most linguistic experts agree that the word likely came from the older telegraph slang meaning poor operator. But the Harvard story remains a charming and widely repeated legend in amateur radio circles, especially among old timers who like to honor the roots of their hobby. 
Regardless of which version you believe, one thing is certain. By the 1920s, the term ham was no longer an insult. In fact, it had become a badge of honor. Amateur radio operators had proven themselves to be more than just hobbyists. They were innovators and problem solvers who helped advance radio technology itself. When disaster struck, it was often the hams who provided emergency communication when other systems failed. During both world wars, amateur operators were called upon to assist with technical expertise, and many military radio specialists originally learned their skills as civilian hams tinkering in their garages. Over time, the amateur radio community grew into a global network. The International Amateur Radio Union was formed in 1925 to represent operators worldwide, and governments began setting aside specific frequency bands for amateur use. To this day, hams operate under regulated licenses that test their technical knowledge, communication skills, and understanding of the rules. And despite the rise of modern communication tools like smartphones, Wi-Fi, and the internet, ham radio has never disappeared. In fact, it's still thriving with millions of licensed operators around the world. One of the most fascinating aspects of ham radio is how it bridges generations and cultures. You can find operators from every age group talking to one another across continents using nothing more than radio waves bouncing off the ionosphere. Some use Morse code, others use voice transmission, and many now use digital modes that blend radio with modern computing. But no matter how advanced the tools become, the spirit of experimentation and curiosity remains exactly the same as it was over a hundred years ago. So the next time you hear someone talking about ham radio, you'll know it's not about sandwiches or meat. It's about a century-old tradition of communication pioneers who helped shape modern technology. Whether the name came from an insult, a Harvard station, or a mix of both, ham radio stands today as a testament to human ingenuity and the power of connection. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.